We're Raku firing tomorrow. Yes, we're Raku firing tomorrow. Oh. All right. Unless we are. No, no, no. That wouldn't work. The, the Raku is not food safe. So I definitely won't do that. Um, good morning. Happy Thursday. Uh, give your eyeballs up here because I have some really important information that I need to share with everybody. Even if you didn't choose to fire your Raku feeds, even if you're not going to be here tomorrow. Um, I have information to share about Raku because if you're not here tomorrow, you have a quiz on Raku and what it is and the results and all the stuff I'm going to talk about now. Uh, you'll have a quiz on it tomorrow if you're not going to be here. If you are going to be here, and I have my list of all the people who signed up online to help out with Raku firing, um, and I'm going to double check with you today and make sure that that time slot still works and so I can count on you being there. Um, but if you show up yesterday or tomorrow, sorry, you show up tomorrow, you don't have to take the quiz. Like being here and helping is your assignment, is your attendance for tomorrow. So no Google Meets at all. But if you're not coming here to help tomorrow, you will have a quiz due by 3 p.m. Okay? So just want to be clear about that. Um, so let's jump in. Let's unfreeze my screen. That would be helpful. Oh, it is supposed to be black. All right. So you guys are doing Raku, but also happening tomorrow is something called horse hair firing. That's what my advanced students are doing. So I'm going to show you that really quickly, just a little snapshot of what they're going to be doing. This is the only thing that you would get to do if you sign up for advanced for next year. Um, so these pots have no glaze. They're just blank. They've been polished before they were fired. And uh, what I'll do is have somebody hand me hair. Um, it's going to be me tomorrow, super glossy. So you want to take your gloves off. So the advanced kids who made their horsehair pots are going to get to do this to their pots tomorrow. Our kiln is not going to be quite that sophisticated. So first he's going to throw sugar at it. And wherever the sugar hits the hot pot, it makes a black spot. Now he's going to take horse hair. And because horse hair is really coarse, it burns and leaves a permanent mark on the clay. We've tried this with other kinds of hair, like human hair. Doesn't work. Human hair is too fine. So that's horse hair firing. Um, you'll get a chance to, to witness that if you're here tomorrow. Um, some new terms, some of these are old. Um, raccoon firing, you know, is a quick outdoor firing process. Frog, you know, are the tiny stones in raccoon clay. But the rest of these terms are going to be somewhat new. So the first term is oxidation. Oxidation means um, that oxygen can get in the kiln. So an oxidation firing would be anything we do back there in the, the kiln room is an oxidation firing. Air can come and go inside that kiln. Um, outside, when we pull our kilns outside tomorrow, those are going to be oxidation firings. Oxygen can come and go out of the kiln. And so when we pull your pots out of the kiln when they've just been oxidation fired, they're not going to look all that special. They're going to look pretty blah, actually. But then we put them in reduction. So when the pots are still glowing hot, we're going to put them in big barrels, metal barrels full of stuff that burns, like newspaper, sawdust, whatever I happen to have on hand. We're going to put the hot pots in there. And as soon as that hot pot hits that material, it's going to ignite. It's going to cause, cause a, a fire inside that barrel. We're going to slam the lid on tight, and it's going to eat up all the oxygen inside that can. That's reduction. Reduction is when all the oxygen is burned away, and so what's left is copper. Copper comes to the surface of the clay and creates beautiful rainbow metallic shiny effects, or the carbon that's created from the burning goes into the clay and turns any area that doesn't have glaze on it black. So like the bottoms of your pots that don't have glaze on will be black. 
If you choose a crackle glaze, I have two crackle glazes I'll show you in a little bit, the cracks will turn black because the, the smoke can get into those areas. So reduction is really what makes Raku pieces special. Um, thermal shock is what your clay goes through because it's gonna go from 1800 degrees Fahrenheit to 55 degrees. It's supposed to be in the 50s tomorrow. So it's gonna go from that really hot temperature to that really cool temperature really quick. It's gonna crash cool. And so that's thermal shock. And because of thermal shock, there are some pieces that may crack tomorrow. It just, it just happens sometimes. Um, even with raku clay, the, the shock is too great. It may crack. So I just wanted to give you a little bit of a heads up about that. Copper flashing and crazing are the two types of glaze that I have for you. And I'll be showing you where they are and how to choose between them in a little bit. Um, copper flashing glazes are glazes that turn all metallic and shiny like a fresh new copper penny or they turn rainbow like purples and reds and oranges um, and golds uh, on the surface of the plate. It all kind of depends on what happens in that reduction chamber, what happens on the surface of the plates. The other type of glaze that I have for you is crazing glazes and crazing means cracking. So I have two glazes that you can choose that are crackle glazes that will um, give you uh, kind of an old antique effect. So here's a picture of what the two different glazes look like. And it's different every time we fire. So I can't tell you that your pot is going to look exactly like this. Um, but the, this is typical of what a flashing glaze would look like. And that's typical of what a crazing or crackle glaze would look like. Um, so that's kind of going to help you hopefully as you're making some choices about glazing today. Um, a little quick history of Raku. It is an actual Japanese form of firing but they don't do it or they didn't do it like we do it today. So an actual raku firing from Japan um, would be fired uh, in, a, in a kiln for a really long time. And um, usually the pots would be fired inside a little shell to protect them from the atmosphere inside the kiln. Um, that's not what we do. Um, we do a Western style raku firing that's all due to that guy right there, a guy named Paul Soldner. He's actually the guy that designed our mixer. That's a Soldner mixer. He's a really brilliant ceramicist but also a really weird hippie. So he lived in California in the 70s and he was a nudist. So he would like raku fire in the nude. We will not be doing that tomorrow, just FYI, it's very dangerous. Um, but he was just this like free flowing guy and uh, he was throwing a party one night in California at, at his house and um, he was at, like as the entertainment of the party, he was doing a fire outside. He had brought his kiln outside and was firing some pots. So in a fit of madness, he opened up his kiln in the middle of this party grabbed a pot with some with some like heat gloves on and threw it in his koi pond and like killed all the fish in his koi pond. Uh, so when the, the pot was cool enough to pull out of that pond, he pulled it out with his hand and the rainbow metallic effects on that pot were like unlike anything he had ever seen before. He was a ceramics professor at the University of California in Berkeley. So he knew a lot about clay, uh, but he had never seen this process before. So he was the person that really kind of introduced westernized raku fire and that's the reason we're doing what we're doing tomorrow firing up the pots pulling them out when they're hot and crash cooling them we're not going to throw them in a pond we'll be pond that would be terrible uh, but we will be putting in in those reduction chambers and then dunking them in water to cool them so this is what the process is going to look like for those of you who are going to be here tomorrow um, this will give you a little insight into what to expect. Those of you who aren't going to be here tomorrow, this will give you insight into what you So this is more like what our kiln will look like. Propane tanks and meat burners and everything. There's the reduction chamber, so those pots are just sold out. Today, I'm just going to another one. We'll basically heat the pieces up to a company over 1700 degrees Fahrenheit. Lift the kiln cage off. People with bombs, rapid cases, transfer them over here to uh, a barrel. They go into a barrel with combustibles, the lids put on, and it's deprived of oxygen. That atmosphere creates these really dynamic blaze effects that you can't get any other way. Uh, blazes crackle, they go into like a copper penny. It's a very different type of firing that was uh, invented in the first of Japan. So when we fire tomorrow, um, I'm just going to, can I mute this? Yes, I can. Um, so when we fire tomorrow, um, if you're signed up for one of these shifts tomorrow, you don't have to do anything you're not comfortable with. 
So if pulling the pots out of the kiln with the tongs makes you feel a little bit nervous, you don't have to do that. There's several jobs that will, will, that will need doing. Um, if you're not the person that pulls the pots out of the kiln, maybe you're the person that once the pot is in the, the can full of the sawdust, you throw more sawdust on it so that the fire keeps going. Or maybe you're the person that helps clean the pots at the end. So um, there's gonna be a job for everybody and I'm not gonna make you go outside your comfort zone for that. So things to know for tomorrow, if you're gonna be here. Um, the weather's supposed to be nice. It's supposed to be sunny and in the mid fifties. So I'm really excited about that. Um, if you wanna hang out outside the whole time, you can. I have some easy up tents that we'll put up so you could be in the shade. I have some picnic blankets so you can you know, lay out on, on the grass. If you wanna bring a camp chair, uh, feel free to bring a camp chair. I, I won't have chairs, I'll just have blankets. Um, but uh, the weather will be nice. But even so, I would like you to wear pants tomorrow. Wear pants, wear a long sleeve shirt. Um, if you wanna wear shorts and a t-shirt under those pants and long sleeve shirt, that's fine. But when, when it's go time, when we're pulling pots or when there's any sort of heat coming out of the kiln, I want you to be protected. So you're not gonna burn your little arm hairs off your arm. Uh, so please wear old stuff. Um, you will leave smelling like a campfire. That's just kind of how it is, uh, which I think is a really good smell. Um, also wear old shoes, closed toe shoes, like old tennis shoes will be best. Um, they probably will get dirty. Uh, so don't wear your nice bright white shoes. And then also don't wear sandals because your toes are gonna get kind of close to the kiln. So we wanna make sure that your toes are protected from the heat. Um, other stuff to bring, a water bottle, camp chair. Um, please be on time. I'll go around and I'll ask each one of you who signed up for a spot if that spot still works for you. If it doesn't work for you, we'll talk about what other time you can come in. Um, but please arrive on time. And you can see and access what time you signed up for on Sign Up Genius, or you can write down when I come around and talk to you. Um, if you're here during the 11 o'clock to one shift, um, we usually order pizza when we do these firing days. And so if you wanna get in on ordering some pizza, maybe bring $5 to contribute to ordering pizza. Um, my room will be open, but you won't be able to go up to the vending machines. Um, you can use the bathroom while you're here but I don't want um, students kind of wandering all around the school. So if you want to bring a special drink, bring that with you. Um, and that's if you're here during the, the dinner hour. So um, the, I'm going to talk about glazing Raku in a little bit because they are different glazes and I have something special that you are going to do your pots first before you play today. Um, and so I'm just going to really quickly kind of go through the other stuff that you have to do today. So first off, with your if you fire your raku piece, you're going to wax it. So we've never done this before, but the wax is going to prevent the glaze from going on the bottom of the pot, and it's also going to prevent the glaze from going on the bottom of the lid because the lid and your pot get fired separately from each other. So you're going to wax it. I'll show you where and how you do that in a little bit. Um, then you're going to wait for it to harden. Then you're going to glaze your raku project. People who are at home, if you want me to glaze your project for you, I would be happy to do that. Stick around, and I'll ask you what glazes you want me to use after I go over them. Um, and then, when you're done glazing for today, I want you to put your project back on this cart where you got it from, uh, but I want you to fill out a little slip of paper that has your name and which glazes you use, and put that in between your pot and the lid. So this is going to help me know which pieces I have to prioritize glazing tomorrow, and also when I load the rack with kiln, it's better if all the same type of glaze are in the same load. So all the crackle glazes together, all the flashing glazes together. So keep track of which glazes you use and put your name on that sheet of paper. The paper is on all your tables. Um, if you didn't fire your raku thing, um, that's fine. You uh, do not have anything to glaze today. I still want you to watch the process, um, but you will not have to, to worry about glazing today. Um, the big thing that I'm going to push after that, after you've glazed, and the glazing won't take you very long because you're going to get to dip it. You don't have to paint it. Um, after you're done glazing, you're going to work on your mug. It is due today. That means the 360 degree video is due and then the artist statement is due. So when you show me your video, it should look something like this in uh, horizontal mode, um, in good lighting. I want to see the whole thing really slowly from all sides so I can see the smoothness, the designs if you added them. The handle, I want to see that handle is wider as it approaches the body of the mug. I want to be able to see that foot if you added one. Um, then once you've shown me all the sides really slowly, 
then pick it up and show me the top for about 10 seconds so I can see the lip and see that it's moved inside, and then show me the foot for about 10 seconds. And don't forget to carve your initials in the foot. Then the bullets on the right are the statement questions. You're going to answer those questions in paragraph form in a Word document, docs. Um, you're going to answer those as best you can. I'm just going to point out a couple of the questions. Um, so it asks, does your mug have a foot? Why was having a foot or not having a foot a good choice for this form from an art standpoint? So I'm asking you, did you choose to put a foot on it, and why was that a good choice? So I don't want you to say, I didn't put a foot on it because I didn't have to. Um, you can tell me, I didn't put a foot on it because my, my pot was already very stable. It has good visual lift. It looks light. Um, you tell me art reasons for why you did or did not do something, please. And the same thing for the surface design. Did you include a surface design? Why did you make this choice? What, is your, what was your goal? Not just because you were lazy and didn't want to do it, but what was your artistic reason for including a design or not including a design? So I don't have my sample artist statement written for you, but I think we've done this enough times now that you kind of get what it's all about. So um, let's see. I'm going to go back to this slide and keep it locked on for the rest of the hour and I'm going to have you guys gather around table seven. So Cam and Eva and Caitlin's table. Um, gather in as close as you can. Thank you, Cam. Yes. So we can still socially distance, but um, you can see. <clears throat> so People who are at home, I'm sorry. I'm going to be turning you all over the place here. <laughs> yeah, sorry. I, I turned it so you're not in the background now. Okay, so a couple of quick things about um, glazing your raku keys. Okay. So here's my raku box. Um, so raku is actually a low fire glazing process. Like our kiln out there is low fire. So you could, if you wanted to, like I'm going to say blue, I'm going to like draw attention to your piece, you have that little mushroom on your, um, on the thing. If you wanted that mushroom to have red, uh, a red background and white spots, you can use the low fire glazes that are right behind you. So anybody, if you have an area and you want that area to be blue or green or pink or whatever, in fact, on my cactus, I glaze this pink. I know it's really hard to see because it's kind of the same color as the clay, but I glazed this pink because I wanted the flower to be pink. So if you want to use those low fire glazes on a small area, don't use them on the whole pot because they don't do anything special. They just give you a color, a specific color. But I chose to do um, the pink on there. So then my next step now is to wax both the bottom of the lid and also the bottom of the pot. So for this, I'm going to need to turn the screen. Sorry. It's going to go over there. Um, so over here, I have a wok full of wax. That is fun to say, a wok of wax. So I'm going to take my lid, first of all, I'm going to get a really good grip on it, and I'm going to dip it in that wax so that my flange is waxed. Okay, and i got to let it drip a little bit to, to let it harden. Make sure you let it drip into the wok. And I'm going to set it aside, and then I'm going to do the same thing in the box. I'm going to dip the bottom of the box in the wax. The wax is going to resist the glaze, so the glaze will not hopefully touch those areas that are waxed. It will resist the glaze. So that's waxed. It's already pretty hard because the clay was cold and it cooled off uh, really quick. So I'm going to put that there. Then, I'm going to turn this so you're not in the picture. You're good. Uh, over here are our raku glazes. So the ones on this side are the flashing glazes, the ones that turn all coppery and metallic-y and, um, and rainbow. Uh, the ones on this side are the crackle glazes, the ones that crack and look um, really open and sweet. And I do have test tiles, test pots to show you the base color. But remember, uh, these were fired inside an oxidation kiln. So these are not looking all flashy because these I was not able to put in a reduction chamber to make them get all flashy and cool and, and raccoon-y. So this is only gonna tell you the base color of the glaze. Once this is fired out there, it'll become coppery. It'll become metallic-y. So as of right now, you're just seeing the copper just through oxidation. So um, this isn't really a true example of how it really will turn out. So one is called Mystery Meat. That's a flashing glaze that's mixed from a mixture of a bunch of older glazes that I just all mixed together, hence the name Mystery Meat. Uh, this one is called Metallic Flash. So it's a test tile for each one. 
This is clear uh, crackle. Uh, again, it just looks white because the clay is white. But after firing outside, anything that doesn't have glaze on it will turn black, and the cracks will turn black as well. And then the last one that I have over here is a turquoise crackle. That's this one. It's kind of a little bit more satin in color. And again, the cracks will turn black in the fire. Okay? So I'm going to use that turquoise crackle um, because I kind of want this to look a, a bit like a cactus, and I feel like that's the closest color. So I'm just going to make sure it's stirred up. I'm going to hold it by its flower. Quick dip. Really quick dip. So I'm going to dip, pull it back out again, kind of shake it off a little bit, and check it out. Where the wax is, the glaze won't stick. See how that's all? I mean, there's a few beads of glaze that I can just wipe away. Um, that's really slick, how that's just um, coming right off. Then I'm going to do the same thing for the body. Now I want the glaze to go on the inside here. So what I might do is I might just tip dip it sideways. That way the glaze will go to the inside and the outside. Um, hmm. oh, yeah, that's not gonna work. I could also paint the inside too, but I'm just gonna go for a dip, shake it off. Let the extra drip back in the jar. You can see on the bottom, the glaze is being resisted. Um, there's one little air bubble in there that the, where the glaze didn't get to. It would be too risky for me to dip that again because if the glaze coats too thickly, it'll run in the firing. So I'll just take a paintbrush and I'll paint that one last little spot there. Um, also, um, one of the students figured this out already today. Um, if your lid fit is kind of tight, by glazing inside here, that might mean that your lid may not fit if your lid fit is already really tight because that extra millimeter of glaze might prevent your lid from going back on and fitting nicely. So what you may want to do is take a sponge and just wipe off the glaze that's on the inside of the lip there. Oops, go on camera. Uh, if you wipe off that glaze on the inside of the lip, that should ensure that after firing, the lid should fit back on there. So then if I'm done, I still need to wipe away some of the beads on the bottom and I still need to wipe some of that glaze and, and paint the inside. But if I was done, I would put my little sheet of paper with the, the name of the glaze and my name on it. And I would put it back on this cart. So that though that cart can just get rolled out tomorrow and those pieces can be put into the kiln. So um, that's the first thing I'd like you to do, to do today if you fired your Raku thing. If you didn't fire your Raku thing, you can just start working on your mug, okay? But if you do have your Raku fired, glaze it first. All right, people who are at home, stay on the line.